They report an officer down Midway and Sheridan and Broomfield. They report that both an officer and suspect have been shot. Get that ambulance up to the hospital and there may be a couple of units that can assist up at the hospital. A Denver officer shot. We have one officer with the Denver Police Department fugitive unit who was transported to a local hospital. I do not have a, an update on his condition at this time. That officer injured during a shootout in the middle of a Broomfield neighborhood. The officers fired back, hitting the suspect. It was a homicide investigation that this suspect was wanted in connection with. We're live in Broomfield bringing you the very latest from officers and neighbors in the area. And right now you are taking a live look at the intersection of Sheridan and Midway in Broomfield where that Denver police officer was shot this afternoon. Police say that officer was with the fugitive unit in Denver tracking down a suspect with other officers and that officer was taken to the hospital. Thank you for joining us for Denver 7 News at 6 o'clock. I'm Ann Trujillo and I'm Jessica Porter. We have team coverage tonight on this shooting hearing from neighbors and police. Let's first get to Denver 7's Patrick Perez who was at a press conference that just wrapped up moments ago. So Patrick, what are police saying? Yeah, and we've learned a lot of information within the past half hour. We know that this all started here at this intersection at Midway and Sheridan just after three o'clock this afternoon. I want to walk you if you can stay live on me through the scene here so you can get a better understanding as to what went down. We've learned that Denver Police's uh, fugitive unit was in Broomfield working to find some sort of homicide suspect. They ended up finding him here at this intersection. The suspect then crashed his white SUV into a blue SUV. So the white SUV that you see over there, that's the one that the suspect was driving that has some front end damage. The blue Ford SUV that's closer to this traffic signal was uh, was the one was involved in this crash where that innocent bystander uh, was crashed into. Thankfully, they are going to be OK. Eventually, though, uh, the suspect ran from the scene and then tried to steal another vehicle that's a far be that's far behind some of the crime scene tape over there. So it's a little bit hard to see uh, was not successful in doing in doing so, then tried to take off again. And that is when the officer started firing at uh, and that's when the suspect, I should say, started firing at officers, and that is when he injured this one Denver police officer with that fugitive unit who we've learned is stable at the hospital. Officers did fire back at that suspect. The man did die at the scene here. No one else was hurt, thankfully. We do know that there was a woman in the suspect's car. She was not taken into custody, but police don't yet know her involvement. Uh, and we are hearing that Denver police are planning some sort of briefing at uh, Good Samaritan Hospital in Lafayette where that officer was taken to and again is in a uh, stable condition, which means he should be expected to survive. Once we know more, of course, and we'll pass it along. Yeah, that is certainly encouraging. Thank you, Patrick. So let's now get to Denver 7's Rob Harris. And Rob, you've spoken with neighbors who say they heard the gunshots. Described it as a chaotic scene. You heard Patrick describe what happened and it was that chaos that pulled so many neighbors out from their homes and their apartments right around this area to come out and see what they were hearing from inside. And they were hearing a lot of noises between the crashes of the vehicles, the gunshots being fired, and then the sirens of the responding officers as they were getting here to back up DPD in this situation. I talked to a man on the phone who lives just a few blocks from here. He says he was in his front yard when he heard about six gunshots fired off. He then called police to report that, and police told him that someone had been shot in the area and to stay where he was. So we're hearing from a lot of neighbors who came out just to see what's happening in the neighborhood they say is usually quiet and they're just kind of stunned at what has taken place so far. So throughout the rest of the evening, I'm going to be talking to neighbors and I'll have more of their reaction coming up at 8 o'clock and 10 o'clock tonight. Guys. All right, Rob, thanks for that. And we will have much more on this shooting both on air and on Denver7.com. And you can also find constant updates on the free Denver 7 Plus app. We are exactly 40 days out from the November election. That means the political ads are ramping up in a big way. Yeah, most are being funded by campaigns and political action committees. However, here in Colorado, one rancher is putting a whole lot of his own money into the race. And he spoke with Denver 7's Megan Lopez. All up and down highways and interstates across Colorado, you might have come across billboards like this for the past couple of months, talking about Governor Polis's record and encouraging people to vote Republican in November. Now, you might think that these billboards, these ads are sponsored by some big super PAC or political party or some candidate, but it is one man that's behind them. In a place like Gill, Colorado, far from the halls of the state capitol, it's 
easy to tune out the political chatter. My grandfather came here in 1888, started west of Greeley, and then moved out here. Everything on this 40,000 acre ranch represents the life and livelihood of Steve Wells. That's the house when when my mom and dad lived in. But somehow this rancher living so far from Denver has rattled the political community with these billboards all over the state in bright yellow letters. We did 400 billboards um, statewide. We do some social media. I got the two commercials. Young voters are getting crushed by Jared Polis's bad policies. Every one of them going after Governor Jared Polis. He can't keep doing this. You know, we, it, th this stuff's got to stop. In an election year, political ads are expected. This is unique, though, because Wells isn't working with candidates or some big committee. All of this is coming from his own head and his own pocket. I thought about working with other ones, but I don't like what I see. And I'd rather spend my money my way. He's spent $11 million to oppose Governor Polis so far. Part of the reason... This is... Um, about the center of the ranch um, on the west side. Is because of new oil and gas regulations since the governor took office. Over the years, Wells has allowed a lot of oil and gas drilling on his land, but he's also upset with the governor over education, crime, so, and fentanyl. Things have gotten progressively worse. I've watched the crime. I've got two, two friends that have left, lost adult children to fentanyl. But he says all of this money is a small yes. price for him to pay to change the direction of the state. The way I look at this now, I've done my part and will continue to do my part. Everybody else has got to do theirs and decide what they want their future to look like. So agree with his ideas or not, in politics money talks. And Wells is spending so much, even if he's only one voice, people are paying attention. In Gill, Megan Lopez, Denver 7. And as we enter the final month and a half leading up to the November election, we're looking at how much money campaigns are spending. And by far, the leader in campaign spending in Colorado is Governor Jared Polis. And I looked into the numbers which are available for anyone to view online through the Colorado Secretary of State's office. All political candidates are required to report campaign finances every two weeks leading up to an election. The most recent data is from the 1st of September through the 14th. Governor Polis began the month with more than $3 million on hand. His campaign spent about $1.8 million from that, and over the two weeks, the governor raised another $2 million. So now let's compare that to his Republican opponent, Heidi Ganahl. She started the month with just over $188,000 on hand, and Ganahl's team spent about $158,000 and raised about $154,000. Her campaign also took out $250,000 in loans, which Governor Polis did not have to do. Now, according to the most recent data from the Poll Analysis Group 538, Governor Polis is leading among Colorado voters. 538 looks at all political polls leading up to an election and then averages out the data. And 538 has Governor Polis up in the polls 51.2%, while Ganahl currently stands at 37.7%. Across the country, candidates are spending big money to get their campaign messages heard, and that money is being spent on all platforms. Going deeper tonight, data shows campaigns have spent almost $46 million on digital ads through Google over the past 30 days. And more than $4 million has been spent by campaigns and outside groups on Facebook ads over the same period. A political research company, Ad Impact, estimates that overall ad spending will hit more than $9 billion by Election Day in November. That first leg is Denver to San Francisco. 100 miles a day, five days a week. The next leg is China, all the way to Iran on a bike. A Colorado cyclist is getting ready to pedal his way across the globe, and he is not taking the easy route. And then I was like, well, it would be really cool if you pedaled a pedal boat across those oceans, because then that would be pedaling the whole way. I can't wait. No traffic lights, no silly rules. Like, you make up your own rules. Like, I can't wait. It's going to be brilliant. The last day of the 80s for a while. Cooler and wetter weather for the weekend.